Hey guys, welcome back to Stylized Station. If you're an environment artist who's been waiting to take the next step, this is your moment. For the first time ever, you can get all of our powerful courses for one massively reduced rate in the Stylized Mega Bundle. From environment design to hand painting, stylized character design, and even anime style texturing, this is the bundle for you. Grab it now before the price goes up. Let's get into the video. Hey everyone, my name is Yuan Gunnarad, and I'm a 3D artist working in the game development industry. In this video, I'll be walking you through my process of creating one of my personal projects, the Garrison Warning Bell. I'll be talking a bit about my planning, how I approached concepting and blocking out the assets, modeling, sculpting, texturing, and finally rendering and presentation. Though when it comes to my personal projects, I usually have a specific area in mind that I want to improve in. And that could be anything from what I would consider to be more craft and art specific skills, to more technical aspects like authoring shaders in Unreal Engine. Knowing beforehand what I want to focus on for that project can help me narrow down what the scene or subject will be, as well as the scope of it. For the Garrison Warning Bell project, I knew I wanted to make a somewhat simple asset or small diorama, so that I could spend some more time and care with the sculpting and texturing. And this is in comparison to the project I worked on before, which had a much more zoomed out focus on whole environment and lots of time was dedicated to getting a nice composition rather than necessarily on every individual asset of it. So I started thinking about different subjects for my project and keeping in mind my initial idea of wanting to focus more on the sculpting and texturing, I wanted to have something that would include a couple of different surface materials and something that could also be a nice standalone asset that might also tell a bit of story. I landed on making a bell and I thought about what purpose this bell would have, where it might have been placed and what kind of people would have used it. In my mind I could see a garrison which would ring a sturdy bell when they saw approaching enemies. And I started to think about adding a couple of elements to convey that setting. A couple of arrows lodged in the structure, let loose from the invaders. Maybe some weapon that was left behind around the bell, as if the battle was fought and lost. After looking for some inspiring reference images and a couple of quick sketches, I started to get a sense of the shapes I liked. and blocked out the initial shape ideas in Blender, knowing full well that some things might probably change after getting it into ZBrush. I sort of approached the whole project with an openness and playfulness. So I felt relaxed and excited throughout the process and I just had fun exploring things. I wanted the bell to feel really heavy and the wooden structure to feel massive. Once I had some initial nice curvature to the pieces, I could get a sense of how to balance the volumes and find some harmony in the scene as a whole. Using lattice tools can be a great way of quickly changing the bigger shapes. And uh, I wanted to make sure that the structure felt firmly planted in the ground. I import the model into ZBrush and work on some of the bigger shapes first. After getting some sculpting done, I could more easily get a sense of how to further alter the silhouette. Seeing how the wood grain would flow and how to enhance that by pulling the torn wood in or out. Or when to add damages to break up some of the lines going up the wooden pillars. Here's how I get those initial shapes in the wood, by masking and lifting out and pushing in at an angle using the move brush. Trying to grab outside of the mask to let the fall off give you a nice gradient of strength. I try to be mindful of the angle as to which I move the mesh, to have control over the angle of the beveled edge that it will create. Utilizing this in different ways can almost be used like a 2D artist would use line weight to convey and guide the visual focus of the viewer. Masking and using the move brush is so versatile. It can easily be used on other surfaces like metal to different effects, such as giving it a look of layering wear and tear. It's also a good way of breaking up straight lines such as sharper edges or plane shifts. Even though it can usually look good almost right away after using the mask and move brush, I try to look at the asset a bit zoomed out and decide where to go in and break up some of those fine lines that I just created. This can be done in different ways, but can be just as easy as using the clay build-up brush with no alpha and holding alt to dig into the edges. Sometimes I want to give the edges a bit more of an abrupt breakup and then I'll just cut into them. Most of the time I use Substance Painter as my main texturing tool. The models I'm working on are sort of on the lower end with the amount of polygons. I tend to separate the bake by mesh name to avoid any baking artifacts. Even if the asset is going to be used in a PBR pipeline, I try to just focus on the base color before anything else. And when I have that in a decent state, I will start looking into roughness, metalness, etc. 
It makes it easier for me to work a bit more methodically like this. I think I approach texturing stylized assets in Substance Painter very similarly to how I used to paint miniatures. Where you would start with a base color, then maybe add a wash or ink as a thin paint that would mostly gather in the crevices of the miniature. And then some dry brushing to catch all the raised edges of the miniature. And this is very much how I do the initial stages in Substance Painter as well. I use a fill layer to get a base color. Then I add more layers with black masks and add generators with curvature to start isolating the edges and cavities. For the edges I tend to go with at least two fill layers. One with a bit softer fall off and then a lighter layer on top of that that will catch the sharpest edges. I'll usually add different kinds of gradients as well. Using a fill layer, black mask, generator, position, it tends to be at least a gradient from the bottom and sometimes one from the top, depending on the asset and its purpose. To get some additional variation in the texture, it can be as simple as adding one or two fill layers with a grunge applied to the black mask, playing around with the levels filter and uh, blur or blur slope to get some nice edge transitions. These steps will usually land in a good start. It's definitely possible to take the acid over the finish line, just in Substance Painter, even while going for a hand-painted look. But for this one, I brought it into 3D Coat to have a bit more control over some actual hand-painting and finishing touches. After all that modeling, sculpting and baking, it feels almost like a reward to get it into 3D Coat. I had a blast just playing around with some more details, color variation and enhancing some of the specific parts that were maybe a bit too subtle. Doing a pass in 3D coat is such a great way of breathing some extra bit of life into a stylized asset, whether it's a PBR pipeline or purely hand painted. When it comes to lighting and rendering, I um, tend to stick to either Unreal Engine or Marmoset Toolbag. For this one I went with Marmoset. It's a great software for rendering 3D assets. It's fairly quick and easy to get into and uh, can get you some great results without too much effort at all. Try to keep my process simple because I find it's easy to get lost if you suddenly find yourself with a large number of lights with different luminosity and hue. I browse for a nice HDRI that fits the mood I'm going for. Then I add a directional light, some rim light to contour the asset more clearly and uh, then maybe one or two spotlights to help guide the viewer's eye or to enhance some storytelling. I would like to thank Stylized Station for inviting me to show this project. Make sure to watch the other amazing artists they've got on here. Feel free to check out my art station for more stylized art.